StereoKit is an open source mixed reality library for C Sharp developers. It's really good for building applications and tools. Uh, instead of focusing on the games and interactive media use case, it focuses on uh, applications and productivity and things like that. Uh, so it focuses very much on like how do I how do I do these real world problems that uh, applications need to solve? Like loading files from the file system using a, a built in file picker makes it really easy. Um, and in general, it just makes the uh, mixed reality development experience much easier. So it, it is uh, basically an entire engine of its own. It's an alternative to the other tools that are out there. But it is very specifically focused on mixed reality first. So all of the defaults uh, are, are set up to work really well in mixed reality. All the graphics are tuned to work really well on mobile mixed reality headsets. And uh, it's just a really good experience for those of you who are developing applications that are specifically for mixed reality. Uh, it's also a part of the C Sharp ecosystem, just using the, the regular C Sharp stuff. So nothing fancy or funky going on here. You can just work with NuGet and the latest and greatest .NET features. So it's really good for developers who are already in the .NET ecosystem and really want to make the most of it. Hello and welcome to this next session about MetaHealth, integrating the metaverse benefits in healthcare and well-being with Valentino, whom I'm just giving the stage and um, going to be interested in what you will tell us about this topic. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. And thank you for inviting me. So let me share the screen. All right. OK. So I'm in presenter mode. Do you confirm me? Yes, looks perfect. Awesome. <laughs> thank you again, Martin. And uh, again, thank you everyone for attending the session. Thank you for all the organizers for inviting me today. I'm Valentino Megale. Um, I'm, a, I'm a scientist by training. I have a PhD in neuropharmacology. But first of all, right now, I'm a, um, a startup founder. And I'm also the co-founder and CEO of Software Studios, which is a company that I'm going to present to you right after the, uh, the start of the, of the presentation. So I'm going to present you this uh, particular session entitled MetaHealth. So how to integrate, how to apply the metaverse benefits to healthcare and well-being. But let's start uh, first from Software Studios, which is the reality that I'm leading to get, uh, together with my colleagues, with all the co-founders. We're a team of five co-founders with very diverse skills, ranging from uh, software development to medical research to business innovation, innovation in healthcare. What is Software Studios? So Software Studios is a a uh, digital health startup. We are based in Italy and we are developing virtual reality experiences specifically oriented to pain and stress management for hospitalized patients. Uh, we are developing a 
portfolio of solutions. So we are developing several products. Uh, we developed until now uh, five products, different products covering uh, the needs and the conditions of a variety of target patients from pediatric patients to adults and elder patients. We are now working in more than 15 hospitals in Italy, and uh, uh, we are focused on one side on commercial products, so on virtual reality solutions that we uh, distribute on the market uh, to hospitals, um, pharma and, and meta companies that we also partnered during this uh, during the last years. We started our reality in 2017 in Rome. Uh, and we partnered, we collaborated with Merck, Roche, Novartis, BD right now. Uh, but we are also focused on research and we are collaborating with realities such as uh, the Politecnico in Milan or the National Center, the National Council of Research, uh, always in Milan, uh, with whom we are developing innovative methods to collect data using uh, virtual reality headsets that have a relevance uh, and that have a meaning in, in healthcare well-being. I will have the opportunity to tell you more about this later during my slides. So today, um, I want to share with you uh, a perspective and an experience uh, that we matured on field with software studios and with our work in the hospital. And uh, we use virtual reality as a tool. Uh, we started in 2016 and during the last years, virtual reality matured and developed a lot. It changed a lot. We started using the Google Daydream at the very beginning. We went through the different generations of the Oculus headsets. Today, we are, we are all witnessing this next generation represented by uh, the Oculus Quest Pro, but also great other headsets from HTC, Pico, and so on. So um, the interesting thing is that today talking about virtual reality only is becoming obsolete uh, because what we are witnessing right now is uh, an enrichment of these technologies with other technologies. And we are witnessing virtual reality and generally speaking, immersive technologies uh, leading and moving towards a new paradigm that we call the metaverse. So talking right now about the metaverse is not so easy as we all can uh, imagine, as we all know, because when we go online these days, uh, this is the kind of articles and titles that we can find online. So metaverse like something that is doomed to fail, to fail, because it's not fulfilling all its promises, because uh, we, we see Meta, this big tech that is losing uh, a lot of money because of the investments, of the huge investments in the, in the Metaverse. Um, so it's a critical moment. Uh, I don't know and I don't have the answer to this kind of questions. Is Zuckerberg's Metaverse doomed to fail? I think it's uh, an ambitious question. It's uh, a question about something that is very unpredictable at the moment. But uh, to understand what could happen with the metaverse, what could happen with immersive technologies in the next years, um, I'd like to look a little bit in the past because starting from this kind of title, if we go back to the 90s, uh, reading newspapers in the 90s uh, was something like this, was able to provide us titles like this. The internet is doomed to fail over unfulfilled promises. And the title is definitely the same, the same kind of the title that we can find today about the metaverse and many other technologies also about, you know, the, the Web3, uh, the crypto world and so on. So what we can learn from the past is that, uh, generally speaking, the expectations about the new technology from the human perspective are always linear. But on the other side, technologies change in a very fast way, but they change in an exponential way. What that means is at the very beginning, when we are in front of a new technology, uh, 
at the beginning, probably the promises, so the, a, a new technology is not able to fulfill all the promises. And we experience, most of the people experience something that is closer to the disappointment instead of excitement. The excitement, maybe it's, uh, it's at the very beginning of the journey. But after some time, we, we are used to have everything immediately. And suddenly, technology is below our expectations. And of course, uh, newspapers, they like things that grow, but they love things that fall. And the titles like this provides with uh, a lot of audience, a lot of interest, a lot of traction. Uh, can we, um, can we uh, trust this kind of titles? I don't know. Maybe it's just hype, the inverse of the hype than the beginning. But what we can, what we should remember also is that we are talking about the metaverse like something that is uh, only meta-made. But since the beginning, since the rebrand from Facebook to Meta, uh, all the people working in the field, we understood and we also wrote online. We contributed to many discussions saying the metaverse and the future of the metaverse, the future of the cyberspace, the future of immersive technologies, uh, whatever we want to use as a, as a term, as a word to define this kind of process, is not only meta. Because if we look at the market cap of all the companies, all the realities that are working on the metaverse paradigm, meta is only one point on a big map. Of course, meta is playing a key role. They're investing a lot. If we are talking about the metaverse, is first of all because of the marketing of the marketing uh, initiative that uh, Facebook started in 2021. But uh, there is something more beyond just the term metaverse. And we all understand that there is something more. And um, uh, based on Gartner, Gartner is a great resource to understand a little bit where we are, what are the trending technology around us. And it's a good resource to uh, not no, because it's not certain. Of course, it's the result of some valuations that can be shared or not. But uh, it's a good reference point, a good be benchmark to try to understand uh, what is the position of a new technology within the so-called hype cycle, which is this kind of roller coaster starting from a new technology that provides excitement, excitement, excitement to the peak of the hype, and then, because all the promises cannot be fulfilled immediately, uh, this uh, in the interest towards this technology fall, fell, and uh, fell through the um, valley of the disillusionment until the people who are really working on that technology restart building that, building, 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 until the technology becomes mature and exits the hype cycle. So based on Gartner, um, the metaverse is the very beginning of this process. So we are still heading towards the, the peak of the hype cycle. Maybe we are a little bit closer to that because now, because of this crisis, financial crisis, and all the problems experienced by meta, we are exactly after the peak. So I think that uh, we cannot um, analyze uh, the journey of every new technology is using the same timing that we experienced or that we lived in the past. Timing and the time of change is, is changing. And uh, we can expect a future where things will change faster and faster and faster. The speed of change is going to increase with every new technology. So uh, probably, yes, the, the metaverse is uh, closer to the peak of the hype. But what we can understand, what, what, is, uh, what this kind of graphic is suggesting to us is that the metaverse has a long journey um, in the future. We still need some years, even 10 years or more than 10 years to reach a mature, a functionally mature metaverse, something that uh, can become part of our daily life, something that is economically accessible, something that is uh, usable, uh, something that 
anybody can use to learn to play to work to connect with peers okay but between today and that moment there will be a lot of improvements and all these intermediate improvements have a value they can be used to provide specific value benefits and advantages to society so we should not just wait for that ending point at the end of the decade because all the intermediate steps can have a value can have a meaning from the economical from the cultural from the healthcare point of view and we are getting to that point during these slides so um we um, saw some of the information about the metaverse but first of all what is the metaverse because i think this is also a challenge uh, it's not only a challenge for the general public but also for professionals because we're still working to find out the right definition to the metaverse and the metaverse is something dynamic is something changing every day so finding the right definition when something is changing is not probably the easiest uh the easiest thing just think that um Gérard Lanier, so the so-called father of virtual reality in his book the dawn of the new everything he uh used and he find out uh 50 uh types and 50 different kinds of definitions for virtual reality and virtual reality is not a new technology as we know virtual reality the first headset was created and was engineered in 1969 with a head train there were also some headsets before so it's not something new but even uh, a technology that is already mature from the technological point of view virtual reality you can define that in many ways just choosing different perspectives to let emerge different aspects of the same technology or of the same paradigm of the same uh, uh, experience digital experience so i just picked up uh, three examples of definitions about virtual reality you can range from an instrumentation to explore the deep time of nervous system adaptations and pre-adaptations and you can end with entertainment products that create illusions of another place another body or another logic for how the world works uh, we can we are aligned uh, around the topic and around the definition that virtual reality is a reality machine so it's a digital technology that is engineered to simulate our sense of presence in another place which is different from the one where we are uh, with our physical body but uh, okay so this is virtual reality okay so virtual reality is about creating a new world digital synthetic that we can visit with a realistic feeling of being there the sense of presence so so what so what is the metaverse respect to um to the we can say traditional virtual reality there are many definitions you can just surf the web and find many many definitions every professional from around the world provides his perspective and it's a very nice thing because uh it's great to find so many creative ways of dealing with the with the same process i uh, choose one definition that I that I think is is good is a good benchmark to start from. So uh, I use the the word so Kavya Perlman, who is the CEO of the XRSI, uh, an organization I will uh, share with you later. Basically, it's a global organization working on topics like safety and privacy and ethics when it comes to metaverse and immersive technologies. Based on uh, on the words of Kavya the metaverse will be a network of virtual worlds some of which can be enjoyed in immersive mode so let's break down this kind of definition first the metaverse will be because it is not yet right now as we said we have a, a, a long future in front of us because the metaverse is something that we still need to develop uh, we are building the infrastructure, we are building the paradigm, we are understanding what we what is achievable with today's technology and tomorrow's technology. But um, we are um, we are maturing the idea that if today virtual reality allows us to visit a virtual world, 
in the metaverse will probably be an announcement of this paradigm. And uh, probably exactly like we do today with the web pages, where we can visit the page and then jump from one page to another one, thanks to the hyperlinks. Uh, this will be feasible uh, also in the so-called metaverse. But in that case, we, are, we will have the opportunity to visit a virtual world and jump from one virtual world to another one, exactly like we do in our daily life. We go to the store, then we go to the school, we go to an office, we go, uh, we go to, uh, to home. And basically, we are the same identity that moves across different spaces and different settings. So the metaverse will be probably a network of these virtual worlds, the interconnection of many virtual worlds. And some of them, uh, you will be able to experience them with a new way of experiencing digital content, thanks to the spatial paradigm. Thanks to technologies, you will be able to appreciate space, a, a total digital setting, an interactive setting that will provide you the sense of presence, Okay, the realistic sense of presence. Some of them will be uh, experienceable uh, directly through the browser. Okay, so uh, this kind of paradigm, this kind of horizon of the metaverse is enabled and will be enabled by a progressive convergence of many technologies. So it's not about virtual reality only. And this is something that is uh, heavily emerging from uh, the surrounding society. Today is very uh, challenging to talk about single vertical technologies. Today, every technology is merging with other technology and different benefits are merging as well. And also risks are merging as well. But there is this process that started uh, a long ago, before the hype of the metaverse, where uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, the new generations of connectivity like 5G and the 6G that is already under work, and immersive technologies, they are merging to provide us a new paradigm of experiencing the digital content, not limited to two-dimensional screens that are limited frame for our digital experience, but something closer to uh, our natural daily routine, where we are used to explore a space, where we are used to interact with the content, where we are used to feel present. So uh, let's go back again to virtual reality only before continuing with the metaverse. Virtual reality is one of the technologies of the convergence. And when we talk about virtual reality in healthcare, uh, there are uh, two aspects that makes virtual reality a great digital health tool, a great tool to innovate and change and reshape healthcare operations. First, virtual reality is a present simulation. So it's a technology allowing the user, the individual, to go somewhere else, to feel somewhere else, to trick the brain, elude the brain, and uh, immerse the users in another place. And this is important, and we will see why. Uh, second, virtual reality is not only a projector of a content. It's first of all, a sensor. It's a sensor because it's this way, based on the data that are collected with all the sensors embedded in the headset, it works correctly. But it's also a great tool to quantify this realistic experience that every individual can do with virtual reality. So it's about perception and it's about the data that can be collected during this perceptual experience. So using virtual reality in healthcare is not something new. It uh, started everything in the, in the 90s with the pioneering work of Dr. Hunter Hoffman and David Peterson, who started to use virtual reality and a specific content called Snowboard for drug-free uh, drug pain management in um, polybarred patients. Uh, patients that uh, felt uh, huge pain experiences during medical procedures, and they were um, resistant basically to the administration of traditional painkillers, even opioids. 
So during those years, pioneering years, uh, the researchers decided to provide a virtual reality experience able to simulate the presence of the patients outside of the hospitals, far from their condition. And what they saw it was basically uh, that the perception of pain dropped, the perception of pain was reduced, even respect to traditional drug administration. And when patients uh, underwent the MRI test, they also discovered that it's not only about distraction from the clinical setting, because what they saw in the brain of patients were the pain perception and the pain processing areas of the brain. They were shut down because of the immersion in virtual reality. Valentino, uh, may I briefly yes? interrupt you? Um, the video is frozen. Let's just uh, maybe restart the video camera. Um, I was hesitant to interrupt you <laughs> because you were totally in the flow, but um, maybe. Okay. Um, uh, just let's, your, uh, your camera. Let's see. It's not the presentation. Yeah, it's, let's see. Um, let me. Let's see. If uh, because uh, I, have, I have some problems with the camera in the last days. I don't know why. Okay. But um, if you want, so. I can continue with the presentation and just at the end I can exit and re-enter to be present with yeah let the... me let me just see if I can uh, if it helps if I add and remove you but no cameras still frozen mm. um, I'm trying to I'm trying to close my camera I cannot do that ah, it doesn't and work. I had okay. some problem with Google Meet okay then okay let's just continue okay. yeah sorry didn't want to interrupt you but... yes so then no, 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 not the problem. <laughs> thanks. All right. Then uh, uh, just, I will just yes. re-enter in the session. Yeah, thanks. I will re-enter in the session at the end. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. So um, basically, uh, what they discovered is that the brain immersed in virtual reality is uh, changes its activity. Virtual reality puts our brain in motion. And uh, it's a very particular condition because it's not about being immersed in, in another place. It's a uh, uh, match between what our body, interoception and proprioception feels and what our brain is perceiving from the outside in terms of visual and, and audio stimuli. This particular mismatch probably is also at the basis of this reduced perception of pain. But there is a lot of research to be done yet on the, in this field. What is important to know, what is important to remember is that virtual reality puts our brain in motion, that we have finally at our disposition the opportunity to expose our brain to synthetic stimuli. And these synthetic stimuli are independent from the actual physical environment. That can be a hospital, that can be a painful procedure, uh, and this reminds us that part of the disease and of the stress and of the pain perception has a mental um, has a mental component. And thanks to virtual reality, we are able, we are enabled to attention and support the mental component of the patient to better uh, tackle and cope with the challenges of therapy. So um, also. Is that thanks to virtual reality, we have the control on what the user, the patient, the individual is seeing, uh, is seeing and is hearing. Um, and the interesting aspect is okay, with virtual reality, we are able to expose the user to um, a context on demand. But at the same time, virtual reality becomes a microscope towards our mind. It allows us to study and explore the entire perception, the entire, um, uh, we can say, set of cognitive dynamics that happen in our brain. Because we should remember that based on the external stimuli, our brain builds a representation of our body, a representation of the surrounding environment. So we can use virtual reality to alter, to recalibrate, to change how our mind and our brain perceives and model and represents our body. 
And this is something unusual because normally we have one body, we are in one reality, and it's unusual to change. But it's even more unusual to change our body perception on demand. And this is something that is very interesting from the research point of view, but is also very useful for therapy, especially for the treatment of eating disorders. And the eating disorders where the body perception is hacked by traumas, by experiences, by even internal conditions. Virtual reality can become a great tool to help patients, of course, with the help also of a psychologist. So uh, we can see that this possibility opened by virtual reality, they are creating and they are um, opening the doors towards a new section, we can say a new field of medicine that is called embodied medicine. Uh, a set of interventions that uh, allow the patients to explore their bodies, to, um, to go beyond the limits of their bodies and go beyond also to the limits of their environments. And uh, Okay, uh, and starting from the concept of the embodied medicine and also the medical XR, so the wider field of virtual reality and immersive technologies applied to healthcare, um, what is it? To, to, to many medical areas, uh, to many therapy areas, therapeutic areas. So uh, chronic pain is definitely one of the most interesting procedural pain, so acute pain is one of the most reality treatment of anxiety and phobias. Uh, the same Dr. Hunter Hoffman, he started working on virtual reality, not only with pain perception, but also with uh, phobias treatment, especially the uh, spider phobias uh, and spiders was one of the pioneering, pioneering virtual reality content during those years. It can be used for neuro rehabilitation. It can be used for um, and it can be used, of course, also in the so-called cyber psychology. So in the treatment of depression, even sometimes in schizophrenia, but that is more of a borderline situation. So to date, uh, mapping the companies working with and applying uh, immersive technologies in healthcare, we could count around 472 startups, companies working in this field. The investments are growing. Uh, I just picked up three of the main companies that are working in the field. They collected very huge investments from MindMaze to also VR, who is working in the medical training and applied VR. They are working on pain. Uh, management with virtual reality. And uh, just to uh, recognize that the sector is not new, but is developing, is maturing, is growing. Uh, we already have decades of research. We already have years of clinical trials that uh, allowed recently the FDA in the US to authorize uh, VR solution, uh, solutions to be provided under prescription, just like EX by applied VR. So in case of uh, uh, chronic pain, which is drug resistant, uh, your physician in the US Let's see. Um, I, I think we lost Valentino completely for the moment. <laughs> um, uh, we'll just check and um, be back in a second. <laughs>
have him back in a second um, let me see yes looks like it Martin Martin sorry I don't know where it's uh, ended. <laughs> no worries <laughs> it's all good it's all good um, uh, bring your screen presentation again also back um, I think yes. you're 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 like also the first time I interrupted you you went right back into your flow that was perfect <laughs> And um, I entertained our audience it's, with a little uh, we're right back video. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. So let's uh, okay. Let's try to share it again. Hmm. Okay. Do you, okay, can you see my slides? Hang on one second, it's, uh, it's showing up. Yes, and let me add this. So here we go. And yeah, you were- I don't know what I stopped. This, because, the, the slide before, yeah, the 15, and you were nearly at the end with the, um, uh, the, 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 the ease of um, the last point there. You were explaining that. Ah, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yes. So the, let me continue. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> All good. Right. So thank you. Um, so just to um, just to recognize, not just to acknowledge how mature is the field we have uh, in our past uh, decades of research, and we have years of clinical pilots. Uh, that already led to the possibility that the FDA in the US uh, was able to authorize a virtual reality solution to be prescribed to patients. So today in the US with the, with the content like Ease RX by Applied VR, you are able to go to your doctor, you have a chronic pain, uh, which is drug resistant, and the doctor can prescribe you virtual reality, which is something amazing, groundbreaking. Uh, quite impossible <laughs> even a couple of years ago. So this is a great step forward. So starting from these different applications uh, at Softcore Studios, we decided to focus on pain management. And at the, at the early beginning, uh, we decided to focus on pediatrics. Um, we developed our first project, Tommy, as a virtual reality gaming experience to support pediatric patients during uh, hospitalization. So especially uh, to support them uh, in terms of pain management and stress management uh, when undergoing stressful and painful medical treatments. And at the very beginning, we focus on pediatric oncology, which is a setting where virtual reality is really useful to provide high benefits and high value because to this kind of patients, going beyond the walls of the hospital is uh, emotionally saving, of course beyond the physiological benefits that you can provide with virtual reality. What we saw uh, with preliminary studies this, that we are doing uh, with our partner hospital is that providing Tommy during the um, routine medical treatments from blood withdrawal to, to other that are connected to the pediatric oncology journey, we are able to reduce pain perception by 38%. 
this is a promising initial data uh, that is pushing us to make better and better and better in the field. And side to pediatric oncology, starting last year, we uh, have been contacted by a, a new group of hospitals here in Italy, uh, specifically at the beginning, the Fate Bene Fratelli Hospital in Milan. Um, and we started to apply Tommy and our solutions to a new area, which is the area of the vascular access routine. During the vascular access routine, uh, normally more than 80% of children uh, undergo sedation. So it's, it's important to sedate them to complete successfully the procedure. Of course, administering drug is risky. It's risky because it can generate adverse effects for patients. It is costly because you need to use uh, specific spaces. Also, uh, you need to pay for specialists, for specialized personnel. So it's costly, uh, time uh, consuming, and it's potentially risky for patients. So we decided to use Tommy exactly during the vascular access routine. And uh, we ended this year on between June and July with, uh, with our first publication, a feasibility study, when we attentioned uh, a little cohort uh, of patients, 10 children, uh, undergoing the peak placement routine. So what we saw is a very promising data. We avoided the sedation of patients in the 90% of cases, which is very promising. Of course, we expect this, this a huge uh, percentage to drop a little bit uh, with new studies, but it's a very promising because it's something that is able to reshape how nurses, how health uh, personnel are working, are managing the vascular access. It can change the quality of therapy, the, sorry, the quality of medical treatments for patients, but it is going to, re to change and reshape also the work of the health personnel. So what we saw, uh, thanks to this experience and with the new studies that we are going to do. First, the, uh, the priority, the number one priority when working in the hospitals is the correct training of health personnel. Uh, the final outcomes, the impact of virtual reality on patients starts with a well-trained nurse, starts with a well-trained health personnel who understands technology, who knows how to use technology, and who knows how to apply technology uh, because it's necessary a shift it's necessary a shift from uh, uh, the idea that you can provide a drug that provides an immediate uh, result to the idea that with the um, technology like virtual reality you should consider it not as a administration of something but as a process a process means that the entire experience that you are managing starts before the patient starts to using virtual reality and ends after. And this is very important, but of course, it requires training, also a procedural training for health personnel to understand this and to integrate this new approach in their traditional routines. Uh, also, when you deal with personnel uh, that is trained, when you deal with personnel who understands technology, you can finally focus from the device that becomes just a tool to the content. We invest a lot at the beginning, not only to, um, to explain the content, but especially to explain the device, which is from a certain perspective, um, a, a, a significant investment in time and resources. With trained personnel, uh, any company, us and other companies working in the field, could start directly from the solution, directly from the content and not from the device. Also, when uh, working in the hospitals, we need to remind, uh, to remember that every hospital is unique. Every patient is unique. And that every medical uh, procedure is unique. So when providing a virtual reality solution, the design of the solution should be informed and guided by this diversity focus. We should know what is the age group of patients, of target patients. We should know what is the fragility profile. 
So what patients can do and what patients cannot do, what are the limits from the emotional, physical, cognitive point of view? We should understand what is the medical procedure that we are targeting, because uh, every virtual reality solution has two goals. On one side, support patients. On the other side, uh, ensure the medical procedure is completed successfully. So there are some limits and barriers that should be considered when designing a virtual reality solution. And of course, you should attention what is the routine, the work routine of the medical staff, because the work routines, uh, there are guidelines, but they change across departments and across hospitals. So there is a huge a jungle of diversity that is one of the biggest challenge in developing virtual reality content in healthcare. First, the time. So um, the time of the exposure in virtual reality of patients really depends from the medical procedure. It depends from the purpose. Are you attention? Are you um, focusing on uh, acute pain or are you focusing on chronic pain? Are you focusing on uh, once per, per year uh, treatment or are you focusing on a recurrent treatment? The time of the exposure changes. Uh, and uh, it's it's definitely one of the biggest challenges also when providing this kind of solutions. Um, because in the end, the virtual reality time, so the time that patients spend in virtual reality depends from the comfort and the engagement. They can be very comfortable, but they are not engaged. So they get bored and they want to go out of the virtual reality. On the other side, they can be very engaged, but they can feel discomfort. So in that case, they will be forced to uh, put away the headset. So the great compromise is really to manage and balance comfort and the engagement. But virtual reality today is going beyond. Um, but virtual reality, as I said, is first of all a sensor. So uh, today, with today's devices, Spending 20 minutes in virtual reality means collecting around 2 million data about the user. It's a huge amount. But with the metaverse paradigm, we are heading to, uh, to use virtual reality headsets able to collect new kind of data because they are going to integrate new kind of sensors from eye tracking, face tracking, neurotechnologies like EEG. This is a great opportunity because you can quantify a huge amount of behaviors uh, interactions that have a health relevance. But at the same time, uh, we will be able to access the benefits of these technologies to the extent we are working in a, in a clear regulatory framework. So it should be very clear, not only for the provider, not only for the hospital, but also for the regulatory landscape, what kind of data are collected with the devices. What is the safety of collecting these devices? How they are used? And what are the controls to uh, ensure that the device can be used safely and responsibly from basically by, by the patients? So it's very important, not only with virtual reality, but with the future metaverse paradigm to establish a clear and um, concise regulatory framework. And if you want more information about this, I definitely suggest you to check uh, on the website of the XRSI because there are a lot of information, a lot of reports about the risks and the challenges and the potential controls in terms of ensuring a safe and responsible uh, XR technology application and metaverse application. Also, we say that the metaverse is about the convergence of many technologies. So it's about the convergence between virtual reality and artificial intelligence, for instance. Artificial intelligence can become a great way to analyze all the complex data that you can collect with virtual reality headsets. But it can become also a relational interface. So uh, one of the trends of today's digital world is conversational interactions or with chatbots, with assistants. In virtual reality, all these chatbots and assistants can learn from us. They can learn from our interactions and they can talk with us in a very realistic, human-like way. This is a great opportunity, of course, to have more compelling experiences in immersive worlds. Also, what you can see at the bottom of the slide, 
the AI builder. There are already some demos, there are already some examples of uh, the possibility to create and trigger any kind of virtual reality content based on text or voice inputs. Because virtual reality, just like Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, they can uh, receive this kind of input, this kind of instruction, and they can render a virtual reality scene. I think this is one of the biggest uh, revolutions in virtual reality, because in that case, in healthcare, you will be suddenly able to adapt the virtual reality scenario to the needs and the conditions of every patient. Because what we saw is that there is no one patient equal to another one. Every patient needs a little bit different experience to reach common goals that are important during a healthcare pathway. But let's rem uh, don't forget that AI is a great tool, but it's not an automation of success. Okay, we should have a strategy on how to use artificial intelligence in any kind of field, especially in virtual reality. And it can be an automation of bias because it's created in its feed and it's trained uh, under human control. So bias connected to AI will be one of the biggest challenges in uh, virtual reality. Uh, just, we are quite at the end, sorry for the delay, uh, but uh, another technology that will merge with virtual reality will be also the blockchain, um, especially with the goal to help patients have more control on their data. There is one very interesting reality a company, I made this, who is building the hospital in the future, sorry, hospital in the metaverse. And they are working with the blockchain in order to allow patients to convert their health data into NFTs that can be sold, for instance, or transacted with research facilities. Um, the, it could be very challenging. Of course, it could be very interesting because it opens new opportunities of exchange and new opportunities of relationships between patients, the healthcare system, and research. But the question that I want to highlight is, what does it mean giving the control on data to patients? Are they ready for control or not? Because the control is nice to have, but are they ready to control? Because control means also a responsibility towards how data uh, is going to be used. So what I want to stress at the end is that we talked a lot about technology. We talked a lot about the metaverse and virtual reality. But um, at the very beginning, the biggest challenge now is not technology. Because already technology today is performant, is able to provide a great variety of values. The great challenge is to integrate these technologies to the traditional processes. And to do that, there is a huge effort uh, into education and training of the traditional workforce, from physicians to nurses to, generally speaking, health operators and patients. So. The great challenge is this, not only in healthcare, but in every field uh, impacted by virtual reality. So for us, at the moment, the next steps are three. We are already um, starting a new multicentric study focused on pediatrics and pain management, uh, sorry, in virtual sedation during the vascular access, a study which is called VIVA, and that we, we expect the first data by the end of this year and the beginning of the next one. Uh, we are going to start a new study uh, on adult patients with new projects that we are developing. And they are always focused on pain management and virtual sedation. And we want to uh, integrate our stress biometrics measurements methods in our, uh, um, in our future solutions and products, something that we already published in collaboration with uh, Politecnico in Milan. So next events where you can find us will be to the Tech World in Malta in one week and in Rotterdam at the end of November during the Immersive Tech Week. So please, if you are uh, joining these events, come and uh, let's meet. And also at the beginning of um, uh, December, you can find this very interesting event from 10 to the 15 December, it's totally online, it's free, it's organized by the XRSI, and it's dedicated to safety 
uh, ethics and privacy in the metaverse. There will be days dedicated also to the medical field, so medical XR, and also one day, the day three, dedicated to child safety. So there is a huge um, agenda and a huge collection of great speakers uh, all at your disposition. So thank you. Let's connect if you're interested to continue the discussion. Sorry for the problems, I hope. My video is not frozen anymore. <laughs> no, it's not. Thank you so much for the talk. Um, I have Thank a couple you. of questions from Rene um, that not I would so like me. to take over onto um, the Discord channel, if that's fine yes. with you. Yes. All right. So thank you for the, the great talk and uh, see you on Discord. Thank you. Thank you.